Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and Her Missionaries. We meet on Sunday nights here in Shepherdsville, Kentucky at 545. And we invite anybody that wants to to drop in and uh, worship with us. We always have a good time of praise and worship and then, of course, this Bible study. Uh, we call ourselves missionaries because we believe that the church in America is in trouble. And we believe it's in trouble because of a lack of Bible teaching, especially in the area of Bible prophecy. One third of the Bible is Bible prophecy. And we believe and, and, and feel in our hearts. And as a matter of fact, I know that in most circumstances, the majority of churchgoers are ignorant. And most of the time, almost totally ignorant of Bible prophecy. So a third of the Bible is being ignored. So our whole intent as missionaries is to bring Bible prophecy to the church so that because the world can't understand it. For you see, the spiritual things of God are, are, are discerned by the Spirit of God. The carnal mind cannot perceive it or understand it. So we have dedicated our lives to study it to be watchmen on the walls, to see what's going on in the world and compare it to the Word of God. And I'll just be honest with you, for three years now, my mind continually, continuously gets blown away at how evident and plain it is that Jesus is at the doors, my friends. Amen. So we appreciate you being here and we hope that Christ will be glorified in your presence. We believe He is the only anointed um, only begotten Son of God, and that He always has been, that when He said, uh, we believe that He is the great I Am, when He said to the Pharisees and the religious leaders that day, uh, that before Abraham was I Am, He was claiming to be the great I Am that spoke to Moses from the burning bush, and when Moses asked, who do I tell Pharaoh has sent me, and Jesus said in that bush, tell him that I Am sent you. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Lamb of God. And no one is going to go to heaven except to be born of the Spirit of God. And you are born, born again because you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repented of your sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. And the Spirit of God has come to live in you. We believe that Jesus Christ not only died a atoning death for sin but he was buried and rose again for our justification now he has ascended back to heaven and sits at the right hand of the father ever making intercession for us our whole purpose our whole desire is to glorify the lamb of god for we are fanatically grateful and we are fanatically in love with the lamb of god the lord jesus christ amen amen, amen. amen. so we believe Without a doubt, as Christians, that we are in the last day's war. Okay? And I say it like that because I believe that spiritual warfare is unique to the last days. There's a uniqueness to the warfare that those Christians alive during the season of the rapture will face that other Christians have not. Except for those first Christians. It dawned on me this week that our spiritual warfare is somewhat like it was when Christianity was just getting started. And I'll explain to you why here in just a moment. Evil is being turned loose in our streets and in our homes and our country and around the world like, like not in our recorded history, not in modern history have we seen. So I want to talk to you tonight on spiritual warfare in the last days. And I'm going to introduce you to asterisks. Okay? You know, the Bible said in Exodus, God said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And uh, Ashtaroth, Ashtaroth is uh, the second God that we're going to, other God that we're going to introduce you to. We've been spending several weeks on Baal. And now we're going to talk about her. The last days of spiritual warfare will be like, like it was, like I just said, the church beginning over again, Christianity. And, and I speak expressly concerning the persecution of the saints, okay? And the trouble and, 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 the, and the power of the demonic 
forces that are coming against the church today is somewhat like it was when the church got started because the whole battle is against truth. The whole battle is against the Word of God. The whole battle is against the living Word of God and the written Word of God, you see, just like it was then. Satan tried everything he could to stop the church, and he could not. So today, now that he's got so many people not believing the Word of truth, not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way, not believing in the Bible as the absolute authority. And if you're going to stand up for the truth, if you're going to say what the Bible says, then you are going to suffer for it more and more and more as time goes on. So it's time that we make up our mind that no matter the cost, we're going to stand for the truth. We're not going to be silent anymore, but we're going to say it with love. We're going to say it with love because the whole thing comes down to is that Satan does not want people to know that they're sinners. And if he could convince people that they're not sinners, then they have no need of a Savior. It's the same strategy as it was in the Garden of Eden. Okay? So let's talk about that a little bit. I want to show you a few verses here in 1 Timothy that we should heed to because it is the same instructions that he gave the early church the first church, and we find that we could use these same instructions and descriptions of what's going on, you see, and, and heed to them in our daily lives. You, people say, I ask myself all the time, Lord, what can I do? Well, here it is. Here's what we do. Amen. First of all, he describes what's going on, and you tell me if you believe you see this going on in our society today, okay? First, uh, First Timothy chapter 4, and I picked out about five verses in that chapter I wanted you to see. Verses 1 and 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Okay? He said, Okay, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. Listen to what I'm saying right here. This is very important, all right? Put this first. He said, The Spirit speaketh expressly. Put this first. That in the latter times, we believe we're in the latter times, okay? Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, demons that seduce people because of their fleshly lust and our carnal minds, and they will put forth the doctrines of devils, you see? That they're, they, and then it says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So that's what we have here is a picture of apostasy. Remember, apostasy is when one, you once believed a certain thing, uh, you once believed the Bible was absolutely true, you once believed that Jesus Christ was the only way, but you turned from that. That's what he's describing right here is apostasy, you see. They departed, you see that? They departed from the faith. They departed from the Word of God. In the last days, people will depart. That say they're Christian, that say they love God, will depart from the Word of God, the living Word of God and the written Word of God. And they will give heed, they will succumb to pressure from this woke agenda that we see today. And because their conscience will be seared with a hot iron, after you just give in and give in, from, you start not being convicted over it anymore, you see. So they become what they are calling themselves as progressives. And what I have learned about the word progressive and anybody that identifies themselves as a progressive is that what they mean is they are progressively or they are in the progress of moving away from truth. They are in the progress of moving away from the God that they say they believe in, you see. They are progressively moving away from God. And here's what you hear them say all the time. Don't tell me I'm a sinner. Don't tell me I'm a sinner, you see. And when you hear somebody say, don't tell me I'm a sinner, it's because they have been seduced by a demon spirit and have believed the doctrine of a devil. You see, we as Christians and Bible believers, we don't think we're any better than you. We're all sinners. But the difference between me and you is, if you identify yourself as progressive is, I always felt guilty when I said it. I always admitted to a holy God that I was a sinner. That His Word declared 
that I was a sinner. And when I looked at the Ten Commandments, I realized that I'd broken them. And he said, if you've broken one, you're guilty of breaking them all. Amen? Amen. So that's the difference between me and you. You have believed the lie of the devil that your sin, that what you love to do is not a sin, so therefore you don't need a Savior. See, the difference between me and you is I believe the Word of God is the absolute truth and whatever God says is the truth and whatever man says can be a lie, so I'm just going to believe God. And what has happened is the other gods have come on the scene and now they celebrate sin and normalize sin and, and put to the side and minimalize Christians who stand up for the truth. And all we're trying to tell you is that that is sin and if you don't repent of it and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell forever and we don't want you to go, you see? It's not because we're mad at you. It's not because we hate you. But it's the contrary. It's because we love you. Because we want you to see the truth. We want your eyes to be open. That God says this is wrong and this is right. Mm -hmm. Every, everything in life, there's a law to it. Like the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. It's in place whether you like it or not. Amen. You step off a cliff, you're going to fall down. Amen? Amen. You turn on the hot water. Don't put your hand under it when it's scalding hot or you're going to get burned. There's do's and don'ts. Brush your teeth, don't brush your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, you're going to suffer the results of it. Amen? Amen. So, the whole thing is that Satan, now with these other gods who are seducing spirits, have brought in the doctrine of devils to tell the whole world that they don't need a Savior. That's what we're battling today. That's what it's come down to in a nutshell. And it's going to come down, my friends, it's going to come down to where they're going to say, let's do away with these Christians. Mm -hmm. Let's do away with these Christians that are already shutting us out. They're already silencing us. Amen. And we're already feeling the pressure not to speak out. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and what we are finding is, is that these other gods have got a hold of the leaders of the Western civilization. And we hear our governors say that they are Christian, mm -hmm. but yet they don't believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. You say, well, how do you know they don't believe the Bible? Because they believe that you can kill the unborn. And my Bible tells me that God knew me before I was formed in my mother's belly That's and right. that He formed me in my mother's belly. Yes. Amen? Yes. And that you are a living soul once you are planted in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. You see, at the very moment of conception. Yes. So... It don't matter if your grandpappy preached here and your great-grandpappy preached here. Uh, what matters is, do you believe the Word of God or not? You see? That's what he said we find in the last days. People will say they believe in God, but yet they don't believe the Word of God. That's why we can see our mayor raise up the rainbow flag and be proud of homosexuality when God said it's an abomination. It's a sin, you see? And, the, and we know that the other gods are behind this to normalize and to parade and have pride in the sin instead of shame in the sin. That's where the difference is. We can hear our own president use the word God over and over. God willing, God willing, God willing, but pass laws and have policies all the time that go against the word of God. Even many pastors, I won't even... I won't even give consideration to the pastorettes, you see, but mm -hmm. even many pastors have denounced the Word by not proclaiming the Word. Yeah. Amen, preacher. Amen. Amen. Afraid they'll lose some money, lose their job, lose their position. We ought to be more afraid of God than we are of man. Absolutely. So we're following, we see so many today, mm -hmm. and we have learned that what we really see going on is that other gods have come to take over. Okay? We're going to prove that some more tonight. So here's some more of our instruction for daily living. He said, here's what you'll see. And we're seeing it. Amen. Can I get an amen so far? Amen. So verse 7 and 8 says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables. No matter who says it, if it collides with the Word of God, don't listen to it. Amen? Amen. He said, he said And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. In other words, put some effort in to being godly. Yes. Right? Yeah. Put, go to the gym of being godly. Because he, he, he likens it to bodily exercise. He says, 
Bodily exercise profits a little. It does profit, yeah. but it don't profit you as far as your relationship to God and to others, okay? But godliness is profitable in all things. Mm -hmm. Having promise of the life that is now is, or the, of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Being godly will benefit you both in this life and in the life to come, but you need to put the work in. Yes. It don't just happen by accident, right? We don't get muscles by laying on the couch eating ice cream, right? Then you got to put the gym time in, all right? So look what he says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 13, 15. Till I come, give attendance. In other words, go to the gym, right? Show up. Show up. To what? Reading. And he's not talking about Mark Twain. Right? He's not talking about Harlequin Romance. <laughs> he's talking about the Word of God. Amen. Give it, show up. Show up. Meet with the Lord. Read His Word. Exhortation. Encourage others in the Word of God. The more God don't give us stuff to keep it. He gives us stuff to give away. Amen? To help others. Give yourself, give attendance to doctrine. Make sure what's coming out of your mouth is from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. True doctrine. Make sure, give attendance. Right. Put some energy to it. Once we put, I bear, I, I'll be all day right there. I'm going to have to move on. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laid on of the hands of the presbytery. Now, for us, now that's a specific call to preach that Timothy had, but we all, if we're saved, we got the gift of the Holy Spirit living in us. You see, we got God living in us, and we should not neglect Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. We should not neglect the gift that's in us. Give attendance to Bible reading. This shouldn't be all the Bible you're getting during the week, right? And we shouldn't just throw a little in our mouth there once in a while. We need to lay into it, man. We need to, we need, listen, give attendance to it. And then meditate it. Meditate upon these things. Med just think about it all the time. Bring it into you. Bring the Word of God into you. And then just think about it. And, you need to, and we need to think about it before we say something. And we need to think about it before we go somewhere. We need to think about it before we have bad feelings about somebody. And what we say to people, you see. Think about it. Meditate on it. Look at here. Give thyself wholly to them. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Do you feel Satan trying to make you angry and bitter and vengeful in these days? Boy, I do. I do. I keep wanting to get carnal about the thing. You see, I, I, I want to straighten people out physically, but that ain't, that ain't the weapons of our warfare, you see. God said we got to give ourselves wholly to the Word of God. Amen? That thy prophecy may appear to all. It's just like when, when the Jewish ru uh, rulers seen the apostles, Denise, after they had been with the Lord, it was evident that they had been with the Lord. Amen? Amen. We'll spend some time with him. It'll become evident to everybody around us, yes. those precious little grandbabies, uh -huh. Uh -huh. our sons, our daughters, our wives, our husbands, our church. It'll be evident. It'll be evident. On the contrary, if we're not, it'll be evident we ain't been to the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be evident if we didn't give attendance okay. to reading, studying, and being with the Lord and not neglecting Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, apostasy. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> apostasy is turning away from what you once believed. Now, this can be true of a person. It can also be true of a nation. Okay? turn A nation can turn from God to doctrines of devils. A nation can be seduced by demons and give heed to doctrines of devils. And we know that this is just a description of the other gods because that's what they are. They're demons, you see, that teach the doctrines of hell. They teach lies. And people for people to believe and, and perish and go to hell forever. That's what they want. They want them to live in, they want people to live in hell here and then go to hell forever when they leave here. And we many, many people in the United States of America are doing are believing a lie today. 
That's why the Bible says, my friends, that narrow is the way that leads to heaven. And Amen. few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, many will go in thereat. Amen. I like to think that we sitting here tonight with our love for the Word of God and our love for Jesus, that we're a few that have found it. And we found it in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have no other gods before me. If God's Word does not have... Now listen to me. If God's Word does not have the preeminence in your heart and in your mind, you are serving other gods. But don't argue with me. You can argue with God if you want to. That's Bible right there. Amen? Amen. God's Word is first. And if God's Word is not first, then we stepped away in apostasy and we stepped away to worship other gods. Mm -hmm. The first case of apostasy was recorded in history was at Mount Sinai. Amen. Israel fell into apostasy there at the foot of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Moses was on top of the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments. Oh, but things didn't happen quick enough for them, right? right. So they took things into their own hands and made them an e jail. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's it. Bull calf, it's E G E L, yeah. <clears throat> and it was in honor of the other god Baal, right? So <clears throat> then they began to have a celebration in his honor. <laughs> then they sang and they drank and they danced to his music. They offered up sacrifices on his altar, and the Bible says they corrupted themselves. Amen. And then came judgment. My friends, no individual will get away with a turning from God after you've once known Him. And no nation will get away with it as well. If you think you're a Christian, if you believe you're a Christian, and you can turn away from God and live in sin and be happy, you're not a child of God. If you're a child of God and you turn away from God, and my friends... Judgment will come upon you and you'll feel like there's a house sitting on your shoulders and you won't be able to find no peace. huh? You won't be able to find no contentment because God loves you too much to let you live in sin and He'll take everything away from you till you come back to Him. But if you can go off and live in sin and, and judgment is not upon you, that's a sure sign you need to get saved. Amen? Amen. And it's the same way with a nation. If a nation can once say we believe in Jehovah God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then turn away and deny Him in their laws and in their actions, then judgment is coming. And bless God, today we are living in judgment today because of it. Now what happened at Mount Sinai was a prototype and a template of national apostasy. We see the template replaying in America and around the Western civilization today. The central elements are all here for us to see. Okay, A departure from the Word of God. A departure from the ways of God. A departure or a rejection of the commands of God. Now we see the deification of the works of man's hands. Man is serving and worshiping the works of his own hands, glorifying sin and mocking God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Embracing darkness and shunning light. The Ten Commandments are out and the bull and the arch are in. Mm -hmm. Moses looked down from Mount Sinai to see the apostasy of Israel in anguish mm -hmm. as he got to the foot of the hill, Mount. Mm -hmm. Today, Moses looks down on America yeah. and America's apostasy with the same anguish. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this next slide. Mm -hmm. That's a plaque of Moses, the face of Moses engraved in that. And it's over the door where you enter the chamber where the House of the Representatives convened. Mm -hmm. Let me show you a close-up. Next slide. There's a close-up of it. That's Moses looking down. Now, now you know right in front of that is the speaker's podium all the way down in front. So Moses, just like he looked down on the apostasy of the children of Israel, you think that's the accident God had him put it there? Huh? That ain't no accident. There's Moses looking down now at the speaker's podium. Can you imagine? 
Can you imagine? Moses gazing down at the debates. Moses gazing down at the proceedings. Moses gazing down as, as they were voting and passing legislation. Moses listening to the State of the Union address from the President of the United States of America. God had that place there to show us and to remind us who our God is. Now it is to remind me and you of our apostasy. Maybe not me and you, but those that are leading us in every facet of our lives. The walls are lined with other faces. However, they all turn to face Moses. The same is true for our Supreme Court. Here you see Moses. And in uh, Moses with the Ten Commandments. Right here is a close-up with the Ten Commandments. He is in the center of the arch of the Supreme Court building. Wow. Moses looking down with anguish at the laws that's been passed that go against the Word of God, mm -hmm. go against the Lord Jesus. And then the next picture, Moses is the most prominent picture on the eastern wall in the chamber of the Supreme Court. It is showcased on the eastern wall with the Ten Commandments. I couldn't find a close-up of it. Then finally, the tablets of the Ten Commandments are on the inner side of the door as you enter and lead into the Supreme Court. Just like the first recorded history of national apostasy, there are evil forces at work erasing America's Christian history and robbing America of their godly heritage. Just like it happened in Israel. Let me read you a verse and tell me that you don't see it being true in America. Jeremiah 23, 27. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. People, you hear politicians all the time, God this and God that, at the same time passing laws going against God. Mm -hmm. That ain't the way it works, my friends. I want to show you again and remind you, because I want you to tell others, now this story is in other Gospels, but the last sentence is only in Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45. I think the ladies are getting cold, Paul, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45. I see America being depicted here. Verse 43, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Now we're going to see that when the spirit when the demons were cast out, when these other gods were cast out, um, that the demon left in exile, but did not die, of course, but wandered, you see. And we believe because of the last sentence in verse 45 that you can see this in a person and you can see this in a nation. And when, when the Puritans and when uh, uh, the Christians came here to America... Then, then Christianity came to America and God the Holy Spirit cleaned out the gods and they were exiled because of the heathen that were here. I ain't got nothing against the American Indians. They just had not received the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible calls those people heathens, right? They're just as valuable to him as the white folk that came across yeah. on the Mayflower. That ain't what I'm trying to say, but they did not have Jesus Christ. And without Jesus, you ain't going to heaven, right? Amen. So when Christianity came, uh, America was, was formed and grounded on Judeo-Christianity. Now look at verse 44. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he, came, and when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Now what we've seen the other gods do, okay, the demons, Satan's armies do since World War II, they have driven, they have, they have destroyed the foundation of Christianity by destroying faith in the Word of God as the absolute truth, faith in Jesus Christ as the only way, the only truth, the only life, you see. And therefore, it has been swept out, it has been swept out and it is empty. So the demons, it's all, all this, this ain't nothing that just now happened. He's been sweeping and cleaning for decades and decades. And now the demons finally say, hey, there's enough unbelief. Uh -huh. 
and people that should know better. And the church is scared to say anything about it. Afraid they'll get fired. Afraid somebody won't like them. Afraid they'll stick out and look like a Bible thumper and keep them their mouth shut. Why, they don't even get out and vote. They don't even get out and vote for godly people. It might be because we ain't got no godly ones to vote for. I don't know. But anyway, so he come back and he finds it empty. He finds it swept. And he finds it garnished, ready to go. Amen. It's all set up, ready to go. He said, then goeth he, speaking of the demon, and taketh with himself even other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Now this, again, Matthew 12, 45 is the only one that says this. Even so shall it also be unto this wicked generation. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a whole generation of people here. Okay? That is what we believe without a doubt, has happened to America. Baal has re-entered the world. He has re-entered Western civilization because uh, we have denied the truth. And America has forsaken the word of God. Therefore, we are empty and swept and gar we're still garnished. And Baal has now brought other spirits more wicked than himself. Okay? One of these other gods, this other spirits, is a she. She is one of the most potent of the other gods. She was so important to her followers that she was given the title Queen of Heaven. The moon was described as being her father and the sun as being her brother. However, she was most associated with the planet Venus. Mm -hmm. She was the goddess of sexuality. That is why the planet of Venus is associated with love. She was also the goddess of war and destruction. You find her with these characteristics. She was fiery. She was fierce. She is impetuous, impulsive, greedy, emotional, demanding, stormy, carnal, given to rage, romantic, vindictive, full of unbridled passion, insatiable sexual desire, and boundless pride. If she was denied anything, if she was denied of her desires, you got to hold it, Doug. <laughs> it, it, when I wrote that down, I said, Doug's going to be busted. I see he's having to go. If denied the object of her desires, or if offended, she would become vengeful and violent and could wreak, wreak havoc and destruction. She was the breaker of rules, the transgressor of boundaries, the transgressor of standards and convention. She would demand that which belonged to others. She would even steal from the other gods. If she called them not looking, she would sneak in and steal their most sacred possessions. In one myth, now you need to remember this as, as the next few lessons go on because we're going to see this happening in Western civilization and in America. In one myth, she demanded entrance into the land of the dead, which is the underworld, and she pounded on the gates and she threatened to break them down if she was not let in. Over and over again, we find her threatening the other gods. She was the goddess of prostitution. The prostitutes of ancient Mesopotamia looked to her as their patron and protector. Many times the goddess herself would take on the appearance, nature, and function of a prostitute herself. She was a seducer. She was a temptress, the goddess of captivity. She allured and snatched away her captives. As the patron goddess of the tavern, she was associated to the drinking of alcohol, particularly beer. She dwelled in taverns and mixed sexuality with intoxication. We read of her killing her husband while she herself had many lovers. She was the goddess of promiscuity. Her images were everywhere, molded as clay idols as well as carvings in stone. She most often appeared naked. And of course, we won't show any of those idols here. She most often appeared with her symbols, the sun, the moon, the crescent, and also with her star, which is associated with the planet Venus. 
Now watch out for these things. She was also depicted as the goddess of war, brandishing weapons and entering into combat. Therefore, she was associated with the lion. You'll see her many times pictured with the lion. The lion was often depicted as symbols uh, of her ferocity and power. She was also an enchantress, a sorceress, a goddess of magic and spells. She specialized in love potions, love magic. The, en the enchantment that conjured desire, desire that altered one's affections and behavior. She seized and possessed her worshipers. She moved and spoke through her priestesses who served as her vessels. Her cult reflected her nature. Her worship was saturated with carnality, sensuality, and open sexuality. Ancient writings speak of her temples as akin to houses of prostitution. Every year on the 10th day of the Mesopotamian New Year's Festival of, of Akitu, the Babylonian kings would perform ritual sexual acts in her temple. This would take place through the goddess's high priestess who would act as her surrogate. Her ritualistic temple sex was not confined to kings and high priestess, however. Listen to this. Every woman in the land would have to serve in the temple exchanging sex for money at least once in their lives. All these forms of prostitution in the temple were connected to Ishtar. Her proclivity to break from conventions and break rules would make her the goddess of those on the fringe of society. In the Bible, she is known as Ishtoreth. She is also known by the plural form of her name, Ashtoreth. I, I, what did I say first? Ashtoreth, and this is Ashtoreth, okay? That's the plural form of Ashtoreth. As with Baal, she was, uh, she, she popped up everywhere once, once she got in. She has many forms and has appeared in all of the Middle Eastern countries. In Canaanite mythology, she was connected to Baal and appears as his wife of consort. Mm -hmm. You see her attributes in all kinds of goddesses in the Middle East and the Mediterranean and beyond. In the Canaanite and Western Semitic world, she is called Astarte. The Samaritans called her Inanna. In Assyria and Babylon and much of the Mesopotamian world, she is known as Ishtar. To the Greeks, she became Aphrodite. At the same time, her young lover became uh, became the Musi of Tammuz, he became the god Adonis. To the Romans, she became the goddess Venus. We will often refer to her, or we will most often refer to her as we move forward as Ishtar. Okay, this is a picture of her. Like I said, most of the idols that you'll find of Ishtar, uh, she's naked, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that Christians ought to be looking at that stuff, so I ain't going to bring it up. But you, here you see her on the line with her weapons, her sword, and her bow, and then some sort of planet, probably Venus there with the circle around it, you see. All kind of things are coming to your mind that you've seen in the past now, eh? huh? You know she's on the scene. You know she's on the scene, and we're going to see, we're going we're gonna to dig up and discover her transgressions. <laughs> Come on in, Edward. <clears throat> most, like I said, most of her images are, she is uh, without any clothes. Now, Ishtar has been sent into exile for many years. And let me tell you why, okay? When the Christian faith entered the Roman and the Middle Eastern world, the goddess, along with the other deities and spirits, were cast out, Right? Talked about that earlier. Then entered the age of Christian marriage. Now your eyes are really going to be open to what's going on in the world today and what is missing. Mm -hmm. You take the absolute truth out of Christian marriage, then you take away every foundation of a Christian family, mm -hmm. of a God-ordained marriage and a God-ordained family. Have we seen that happen? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. She's responsible. 
she's responsible. You see, when Christian marriage came, then the contract came between God and a man and a woman. One man and one woman. God made them male and female. Amen. Amen. You see? And when Christianity came to America, it swept her away. She was passed out into exile because um, Christian marriage came between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Marriage with this covenant of marriage from the word of God come faithfulness with it. Faithfulness from a wife to her husband. Faithfulness from a husband to a wife. Okay, so sexuality was only to be expressed within the confines of the institution of marriage. Therefore, she was exiled. Sexuality was a gift from God and only belonged inside holy matrimony. That's why the Bible says that the marriage bed is undefiled. Amen. <laughs> Christianity cast her out. The goddess went into exile. So the question is, has she returned with Baal? Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to do the next two or three messages, but, but we do because once your eyes are open, they need to be further open with evidence, right? So it, it's easy to see, ain't it? It's easy to see how the other gods operated before Christianity came and cast them out and they went wandering around, wandering around, Christianity went throughout all the world, and now that people are, here's what it comes down to, people are denying the authority yes. of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Preachers, governors, mayors, presidents, all around the world. Listen, if the Bible says something, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm not... And why we listen to anybody else. If I can't trust every word of the word of God, then I'm not, I can't trust my salvation. If God is not, listen, if God is not powerful enough to preserve his word, like he said that he would, then he's not powerful enough to make universes. Amen. But since he is, since he is, I pray that you believe him. And let every man be a liar. Yes. Just believe God. Because the truth is, my friends, you are a sinner. Amen. And I am a sinner. Amen. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Satan in the Garden of Eden convinced Eve and then Adam that they would not sin if they disobeyed God. And she had that same idea. Don't tell me I'm a sinner. Because Satan told me otherwise. Right? Yes. It's not God telling you that you're not a sinner. It's not God telling you to have pride in your sin. But it's God that is telling you, and you know He's there, even though your conscience may have been seared by a hot iron, like as if with a hot iron, because you've chased Him off over and over again. But you remember, you remember how God the Holy Spirit convicted you of that sin or those sins mm -hmm. and you ignored it you ignored it now you can <laughs> boldly stand up and say don't tell me I'm a sinner but you know in the deepest recesses of your heart that you are mm -hmm. just like me and just like everybody else that ever lived except for the, the sinless Lamb of God. He was tempted on all points, yet without mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. He came into this world for one reason and one reason only, and that was to reveal the plan of God's salvation for sinners like me and you. And my friends, listen, listen. If, if, if I am not bold enough to stand up for the truth, then I'm not bold enough to stand up for your soul. For Satan has, has beguiled you and taught you that you're not a sinner. Therefore, you don't need a Savior. But I want you to know every time that rainbow flag goes up and we're supposed to have pride in sin, that that is Satan lying to you, lying to you, you see. We should not have pride, but we should have shame in sin. All sin. Listen, my sin may not be yours, but before God, 
It's black and hideous and Amen. nasty Amen. and yes. nasty, you see. And holy God cannot have fellowship with sin. Can't do it and remain holy. So he gave his holy son to die for you and to die for me that we might be saved by faith in his finished work. Would you come to him? Christian, would you dedicate your life right now to exercise yourself in godliness? to be in attendance for reading, for doctrine, huh? would you? For exhortation, would you learn so you can share? Would you commit yourself right now to give yourself wholly to God? Would you do it? That's what the world needs. The world needs you, sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The world needs you, brother. Mm -hmm. They need you to be totally and wholly committed to God Almighty that they might see Jesus living through you to yes, know they're a sinner, but know there's a remedy in the blood of the cross. Would you, Amen. would you? Let's pray, Father in Jesus' name. Lord God, please help our eyes to be opened to the fact that the other gods have come. And we know that your word says to have no other gods before you. And Lord, when I hear my governor say that abortion is not a sin, I know there's another God before you in his heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by their fruit you shall know them. And when my mayor lifts up a flag to be proud of rebellion against you, for a whole month we're supposed to celebrate sin. Oh God, I know we're in trouble. He's in trouble, and everyone that don't believe you is in trouble. But Father, we know, we know that greater it's he that's in us and he that's in the world. We're not going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And if they haul me off to jail, I live at 221 Hillbrook Drive, Shepherdsville, Kentucky. <laughs> Come and get me right now because I'm not going to stop loving you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop loving the Lord. And one day when I stand before him, I don't want your blood on my hands. Mm -hmm. I want you to know God loves you. God loves you right where you're at. Just come to him and he'll change you from the inside out. Yes, amen. amen. Won't you come to him? Won't you come to him right now? Christian, give yourself wholly to him. The world needs Jesus in you. Would you? We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, beloved.